So we're going to prove that if we have a convergent series, then the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. So this is actually the nth term test from calculus. It may not look like it, but when we're done with the proof, I will go over why it actually is. So proof. So we'll start by assuming that we have a convergent series. So suppose that we have a series that converges to say L, where L is a real number. So uh, all we have to do now is write down what it means for a series to converge. So this means that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth partial sum, we get L. So here, the nth partial sum is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub n. So when we say uh, a series converges and we write stuff like equals L, what we really mean is that the limit of these guys, s sub n, is equal to L. So convergence of a series is actually defined in terms of convergence of a sequence. Right? So really important. Okay, back to the proof. So we have to show that this limit is equal to zero. So we have to show that a n approaches zero, a sub n approaches zero as n approaches infinity. Well, if you look here, we have a sub n. So the trick is to write a sub n in a clever way. So note, a sub n, well, we can write that as a sub n plus a sub n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub 1. Now what we'll do is subtract away all of these guys. So minus a sub n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub 1. So a sub n is really equal to, well, all of this is s sub n. And all of this is s sub n minus 1. So this is s sub n minus s sub n minus 1. So if we take the limit, so then if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n minus s sub n minus 1. And this is equal to, well, this converges to L, and this converges to L. So you just get L minus L, which is equal to 0. Now, um, this actually requires a proof. I mean, if you really want to get technical, you can prove that uh, if this converges to L, then this also converges to L. Because these are technically different, right? Here you have an n and here you have an n minus 1. It's a straightforward application of the definition of convergence of a sequence. Very, very easy to do. Worth doing. Uh, worth doing. So that's it. We're done with the proof. We showed that the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to L. All right, so why is this the nth term test? Uh, well, look at this statement here. It says that if this is true, then this is true. So it turns out that there's something called the contrapositive, which is equivalent to this statement. Let me write that down. So contrapositive. So we're going to write the contrapositive of what we just proved, which is logically equivalent. So our statement says, if this is true, then this is true. So the contrapositive will say, if this is not true, then this is not true. So what does it mean for this not to be true? Well, it means that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0, or the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not exist. So if this happens, then this does not happen. So it will be diverges. So a sub n diverges. So let's let's go over that again because the contrapositive is uh, an important idea in mathematics. So our statement said that, let me use a different color, if this was true, then this is true. 
The contrapositive says, if this is not true, then this is not true. So what does it mean for this not to be true? It means this. What does it mean for this not to be true? It means diverges. So this is typically what you see in a calculus class. It's called the nth term test. And it is absolutely your best weapon uh, when determining convergence and divergence. It's the first thing you should always try uh, when you're being asked whether a series converges or diverges. I hope this helps.